Hello, second graders, and welcome back to Changing Landforms. We are still on lesson one. Today's our last lesson, and it's going to be about explaining landform changes. Okay, so remember that we are investigating the same question for this chapter. So our question is, how do geologists figure out how something changed when they can't observe it changing? So we've been making observations to help us visualize how sand got to be the way it is. So just a reminder, Obser observations basically means that we are using our senses to gather information about something. And visualizing is one of the ways we can make observations, which is looking at a picture of something or listening to a reading and trying to create a picture in our mind about what is happening. Scientists also use models to help them investigate things they cannot observe. So we can use a model of something to think about how something happens instead of actually seeing the real thing. A model is something scientists make to answer questions about the real world. So again, model is one of these words that we'll be talking about throughout the unit. So model means something scientists make to answer questions about the real world. So you can go ahead and pause the video and at the very end of your packet in the vocabulary section, you can copy this definition down. Okay. So since we don't have these materials ready at home, we're gonna have to do a lot of visualizing right now to get an idea of how this experiment will work. So in the jar, in the picture, um, these candies are going to represent grains of sand. So we're going to learn that sand can change shape and we'll use this model or the picture and visualizing to gather evidence about sand changing shape. So what we'll be doing or what we'll be visualizing is if we had this jar with the candies in it and we shook the jar of candy, that's going to represent waves and sand crashing together. So before we actually go ahead and look at the next picture, I want you to visualize in your head what you think will happen to the shape of the candies when we shake the jar. So you can go ahead and pause this video and answer your question either by writing it down in your packet, talking to somebody at home, or thinking about it in your head. Okay, so how the model would work, and you can kind of look at the video on the bottom, is you would take the jar and you would shake it 10 times, as hard as you can, and then you would pass it on to somebody else. And then that person would continue shaking it. So you would imagine that if you had your entire class here, every single person would get to shake the jar of candies 10 times and then pass it on. So that's a lot of times that this jar is being shaken and the candies are crashing together. So this is what the candies looked after this person did this experiment. So what do you observe about the hard candies after they've been shaken? So before we go ahead and talk about it, I'm gonna have you write down your observations in your packet, or you can talk to somebody at home or think about it in your head. So when I'm looking at the picture, I'm noticing that you can tell that a lot of the candies seem like they've broken into pieces. Some of them have broken into smaller pieces than others. I'm also noticing that the shape is a little bit different, even for those candies that are larger. It seems like the sides of those candies are a little bit more rounded than they were before. So even though some of them haven't totally broken down into small pieces, the shape has still changed. So. If the hard candies in our model represented sand grains, what evidence does the model give us to support the idea that sand grains can change shape? So when we're thinking about our model, remember that the candy is supposed to represent sand or rocks, and us shaking that jar would be us kind of pretending that we're creating waves in an ocean. So what we're noticing is that in the model, with the hard candies when they were being shaken together, we're noticing that it's changing its shape. So whether that is that pieces are breaking into, going from big pieces into smaller pieces, we're also noticing that even our large pieces of candy are changing shape just by becoming more rounded. And this is very similar to what you would notice in the ocean. So there might be rocks in the ocean and when the waves are crashing together and the rocks are hitting each other, that is creating over time our rocks to turn into smaller grains of sand. It's also changing the shape of our rocks. So maybe the rocks were jagged at the beginning or had sharper edges. And then over time as they're crashing together, the rock is becoming more rounded.
So how is this model with the candy similar to the real world of rocks crashing together and creating sand? And I also want you to think about how it's different. So I'll give you a minute to go ahead and think about this question so you can pause the video and again, either answer it by writing it down in your packet, talking to somebody at home, or thinking about it in your head. So ways that the model is similar, um, it's the process is very similar to what we actually would see in the real world. So in the real world, in the ocean, rocks are constantly being pushed together like we're seeing with the candies in the jar, um, and that's because of waves. So it is similar because we do still get to see the things crashing into each other, and we're also still getting to see what happens to the shape. Um, some ways that I can think about differences in the model. Um, so rocks obviously are not candy, so rocks are not sweet. Um, also, the candies are probably larger than actual sand grains, so that's another way that they're different. Um, and sand takes a lot longer to change shape than the candies. So the candies, if we're doing, if you actually did this experiment at home, it probably would only take you a few minutes to notice the candies changing shape. But in the ocean, the rocks and the sand grains, it takes a lot longer for those to change shape. So those are some differences. So a key concept that we're going to keep in mind is even if geologists can't see a change happening, they can use models to visualize how it may happen. So now we're going to go back to our initial question, which was looking at the cliff. So remember that the question that we are trying to answer is how did the edge of the cliff get to be so close to the flagpole? So remembering looking at the pictures in our top picture, we're seeing that the flagpole was further away from the edge of the cliff at the beginning. And now we're seeing today that the flagpole is a lot closer to the edge of the cliff. So. We're investigating sand to help explain what happened to the cliff. So what evidence did we gather about sand that might help us explain why the cliff looks the way it does now? So thinking back to our readings about Gary's sand journal, thinking back to the handbook we read, one really important thing that we've learned through this, throughout this entire chapter is that things can change shape. So whether that is sand or landforms, those things over time will change shape, and that's probably what is happening to our cliff. So if we think back to our hard candy model and visualize the rock changing, if I continue to shake the jar, what will happen to the hard candies? So if we continue to shake the jar even longer and longer and longer, the candies are going to continue to change shape. So it may break into even smaller pieces. We might notice that... Um, they're continuing to get more rounded instead of jagged. So over time, if we continue making that change or, you know, shaking the jar, then we're going to also continue to see a change in our candy or in our rocks. So we can use the hard candy model to visualize something we cannot observe, which is rock changing. The model helps us visualize rock breaking and changing shape. It provides us with additional evidence that rock can change shape. So another key concept that we've learned throughout this chapter is that even though rock is hard, it can still change shape. It may take a really long time for it to change that shape, but over time it will do it. Okay, and here's the last part. So scientists often write explanations about how things work or why things happen. They write explanations for other scientists and for people who are not scientists like Director Higgins. In this way, many people can learn from scientists' investigations and thinking. So one important vocabulary word throughout this unit is explanation. So an explanation is a description of how something works or why something happens. You can give an explanation through words, you can give an explanation through writing, which we're going to do right now. Um, so what I'm going to have you guys do is pause the video and in the very back of your packet, you can copy down the definition for explanation. So that way you can refer back to it throughout the unit. What is a scientific explanation? So there are three different things that an explanation does. First, it answers a question. Um, next, it is based on science ideas that you've learned, whether that is through readings, through models like we just 
saw, whether it's through things you visualized. And the last thing is it is shared with somebody. So when you create a scientific explanation, it's something that you're going to share with other people. So we're going to go ahead and answer a few questions so that when you guys go ahead and write your explanation, you have some things that you can include. So the first one was, how do you think the edge of the cliff got to be so close to the flagpole? We've talked about this a little bit earlier, um, which is we know that over time landforms change, whether it's a quick change or a, a shorter change. Um, but over time, things do change, which could have affected the way that the cliff looks and how the, close the flagpole is now. So we're also going to start by discussing this question. So what do we know about the cliff? When we look at the cliff, we know that it is made of rock, even though maybe the top of it looks like there's grass. Um, we can see below that it is the landform is made of rock. And if I think back to our first reading about the landform postcards, I remember that story did tell us that every single landform is made of rock, unless you're in the middle of the ocean. Um, I also know with the cliff that we have the flagpole, and our problem is that the flagpole seems to be moving closer to the edge of the cliff. So when we're answering the question, we want to be thinking about all of the information that we can possibly include from all of our sources. So is there more information we can include to support our idea? What do we know about rock that could help us to explain more about our question? So I'm going to have you guys work on writing an explanation in your packets. So in your packet, you should have a page or a question that looks exactly like this one. So the question that we're trying to answer is how did the edge of the cliff get to be so close to the flagpole? So you are going to go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to take a few minutes to think about the questions we just talked about. Think about the books that we've read throughout the chapter. And if you need to go back and re-listen, you can. Um, and you're going to go ahead and answer this question by writing it down in your packet. Um, or if you don't have a packet, you can just write your answer down on a blank piece of paper. If that's not an option, then you can also explain your answer to somebody else or maybe try telling yourself what you would answer if you did have a packet. Okay, and so really quickly, I'm going to just go over a brief how I would maybe answer it. So again, the question was, how did the edge of the cliff get to be so close to the flagpole? When I'm thinking back to all of the books, um, the first thing that I would write down is that all landforms are made out of rock. And I know this because of our reading from landform postcards. I also know that rock is always changing shape. So... And I know this from both the land and water reference book and also from Gary's sand journal. So I would also include that every landform is made of rock and rock is constantly changing shape. So just like our cliff, which is a landform, over time, the rock that that cliff is made out of is going to be changing shape. Maybe it's from wind blowing, um, you know, maybe it's from parts of the cliff maybe collapsing or breaking. So I would think that because the rock is changing shape over time, maybe it's falling down and that's creating the flagpole to move closer to the edge or seem like it's moving closer. Okay, so that is all for chapter one. I look forward to seeing you guys back for chapter two. Have a great rest of your week.